So as of right now, J.D. Martinez is set to join the team tomorrow and take the role of everyday DH in the lineup. Hannah, you recently did a deep dive onto the importance of a solid DH in today's game. So what do Mets fans that haven't been following the career and, and know about J.D. Martinez, what do you think they need to know about him? Well, if you're looking at his career sort of overarchingly, most famously, he uh, was released by the Astros. He got off to a bad start in his career and then sort of rebuilt his swing, taught himself or rather took himself to some independent hitting and structures and learned how to hit and sort of famously since then has been very passionate about hitting as a discipline. Um, he's talked a lot about sort of like my only job is to hit and I'm going to be good at that. Uh, since his offensive breakout in 2014, he has played a decade with a 900 OPS. So he's a very good hitter. And that is a skill. Like being a, a pure DH is an underrated skill in this day and age. Only 14 guys last year had at least 300 plate appearances at DH. J.D. Martinez was fourth in WRC Plus among them. Uh, he was first, minimum 100 plate appearances last year in hard hit percentage. So he is a pure hitter. He is an expert hitter, like a intellectual, a studied expert hitter. I thought this was interesting, too, just sort of looking at the, his career recently. Um, according to his agent, Scott Boris, he left money on the table last year to sign with the Dodgers um, because he, they had one of the hitting coaches that he had gone to work with prior, but also because he wanted to win. Um, and he thought that he could w succeed in, in, in LA, both big picture, they're good, and also wanted to kind of continue to hone his craft as a hitter, and he really did. He had a great bounce back year. I think uh, it's an undervalued skill to be a very good DH because the it, it does limit some of your roster flexibility, but there's also just no reason to have that role on your team and not have someone who's a really, really good hitter in it. So I think it'll be interesting to see how that changes things for the Mets, who've always kind of just rotated that role around since they got the universal DH. Yeah, I mean, and the Mets need good hitting. Um, Tim, how badly do you think that the Mets do need a quality J.D. Martinez? They definitely need him. They need J.D. Martinez to come in and be that big bat that he has been for so long. They have needed somebody like that, as you just said, since the NL brought the DH, since the NL got the DH rule, they've plowed through JD Davis, Dominic Smith, Darren Ruff, Daniel Vogelback, Robinson Cano, just this laundry list of guys who were not good at it. However, this year, while they waited for JD Martinez, the Mets were actually pretty good at having a DH. It was a lot of DJ Stewart and then some guys getting half days off, to, you know, getting off their feet defensively. Starling Marte, Brandon Nimmo, Francisco Alvarez. So through four weeks, Mets DHs as a whole have an 850 OPS, and that's fifth in the majors. So their RBIs and home runs, they're on pace for about 100 RBIs, four home runs. Do I think this motley crew of DH by committee would hold up over six months? Absolutely not. So it's good that J.D. Martinez is ready, and then the Mets will add him to probably the number five spot in their lineup. But they were fine without him. For yeah. they, co they covered those bases well. So um, J.D. Martinez will help. He will not be a savior. The Mets need their other guys to step up too. Lindor, Nemo. Etc. cetera. 